Today, my senior design team and I are going to speak with you about our project regarding the integration of a CMOS camera with an electrophoretic display. And this idea was originated in the mind of Grima Rutman, who is a George Mason University graduate student. Excuse me, George Mason University graduate. graduate. Now, her idea was to apply this technology into applications that have not been realized as of yet. So we'll take you from the conception of the project all the way to the prototype. And I'd like to also begin by introducing Joshua Etienne, who is our technical manager, James Bowden, who is our technical supervisor, and Stephen Fruit, who is the assistant to the manager in finance. <laughs> Shown here is the Amazon Kindle. Now, it utilizes electronic paper, which we use in our, in our project. Now, one unique property of this electronic paper is that it's able to sustain an image without the continued application of power. Also, experimental prototypes have shown to be flexible, video rate capable, and color capable just as well. Now, there are different applications that this technology could be used in, one of which are clothing and jewelry because it is robust and it can be flexible. Now, another application could be used in our military. It could act as active camouflage. Imagine a soldier being able to adjust immediately to their ambiance with the press of a button. Because if you integrate this technology into their uniform, that will be very possible. Next, the two technologies that we had to choose between were an EPD, which stands for electrophoretic display, and a CHLCD, which stands for choleric liquid crystal display. Now the reason why we went with the EPD is because it has a higher refresh rate and a higher bit depth. However, it's worthwhile to point out that the CHLCD has color options. Nevertheless, it's monochromatic. The microcontroller that we selected to accomplish this task was the Atmega 2560. A number of considerations had to be taken into account before we made this final decision, including speed, memory, the number of uh, general purpose input and output pins, uh, external interrupts, and uh, hardware I squared C and UART serial support. <clears throat> this uh, microcontroller is an 8 bit microcontroller uh, that has 8 kilobytes of internal SRAM and a maximum clock frequency of 16 megahertz. And this is enclosed in a 100 pin TQFP surface mount package which required the use of the AT-SDK 600 development board to give us easy access to the pins for development. The next major piece of hardware was the camera module. We went with the C3088 camera module, which sported an OmniVision OB6620 image sensor, along with a lens platform. Uh, one of the great things about this camera module is it already had the breakouts uh, to give us easy access to the pins for integration. And uh, the analog to digital conversion was already done on the camera module. It output in an 8-bit parallel interface in a YCVCR format at 30 frames a second. Another wonderful thing about this camera module is how much documentation was available online because it is a very popular uh, component to use in hobby projects and has been uh, demonstrated in projects such as the ABR cam and the CMU cam. In the early design and experimentation, we integrated this camera module directly with the microcontroller. This posed two big issues. Number one, as I mentioned uh, before, the 2560's maximum clock frequency is 16 megahertz. And the camera mac uh, module's frequency is natively 17 megahertz. So what we had to do is send an I squared C command to the camera module to slow it down into the kilohertz range. And on top of it, we also had uh, issues with space. We didn't have enough memory to, uh, to uh, put a whole frame into the microcontroller. So what we did to uh, alleviate this issue was take 12 rows from approximately 24 frames and then put them together to form one complete image. Um, during this time, the uh, image acquisition process took between 8 to 12 seconds. Uh, and also, the photographer and the subject had to remain completely motionless in order to avoid, uh, avoid any distortion in the image. You can see in the picture behind me in the top left corner uh, an example of this distortion. It looks very pixelated. Now if you zoom in on that, you can see where the 12 rows of 24 frames were put together. 
and the, the camera must have moved uh, <coughs> while this image was taken to create that distortion. To circumvent this issue, we introduced another piece of hardware between the camera module and the microcontroller. This was a first-in, first-out memory buffer. The memory buffer that we went with was Averlogic's AL422B, which had three megabits of DRAM and uh, eight-bit parallel uh, synchronous input and output. It also had se separate read and write operations, allowing the data to be clocked in at one speed and then clocked out at another. This allowed us to run the camera module at its native speed of uh, 17 megahertz and cut down on the image acquisition time from the 8 to 12 seconds mentioned earlier to approximately 1 30th of a second. Perhaps the most groundbreaking aspect of this project is the display itself. Upon some initial research, we arrived to the conclusion that the primary manufacturer and distributor of these electrophoretic displays is a company called PrimeView International, located in Taiwan. We were able to acquire several of these 5-inch displays, and this presented us with our first problem. How do we control them? In order to control these devices, we would have to implement a proprietary protocol, which is completely undocumented, at least publicly and the manufacturer would not help us with this. As a result, we were forced to implement um, extra hardware from PrimeView to basically do this for us. 